All right, so let's take a look at this hole here. It's worth discussing. I had a viewer point this out to me, but if you look down in it, you'll see the hole gets much larger. I dug off to every single side at an angle. So basically I made a pyramid in there. I dug, dug back this direction, this direction, that direction, that direction. And you can see I've got a squared off hole and the pyramid goes to points. Essentially what's gonna happen here I had someone tell me that does a lot of gate posts for a living that as a gate moves with time if you just drill a round hole pour concrete in it or set a round post for example it can actually shift with time things can heave move stuff does happen so if you have a square hole where the packed ground is locking in the concrete or even do what i did a pyramid shape which gives you more stability more weight down there and really locks into the undisturbed ground well that can never twist on me my gate post can never twist so now we're going to mix and fill this with hundreds upon hundreds of pounds of concrete we're going to stick some rebar in here for some reinforcement in case the concrete ever breaks at least we got steel rebar in there helping hold the pieces together and then we're going to wet set some very heavy duty anchor bolts in this. I'm doing this because we're going to have such a long 20 foot steel gate that's very heavy. And I want to make for sure that it never pulls out of the ground shifts on me. Just sticking a post straight in the ground is not going to work for a custom built heavy gate. Not at all. All right, so these are the wet set anchors I'm putting in. They go down in the concrete and when it hardens around them, they can never pull out. And they're very heavy duty for what I'm gonna be doing.
All right, so welcome back everybody. You just seen in the intro, we just welded up our very robust quarter inch wall steel six by six post right here. So we've got the top capped, everything sanded nice and clean. We've got a drain hole drilled in the bottom. Hopefully y'all caught onto that because water will always find its way into something, especially with some holes that we're gonna drill. Three eighths inch thick steel plate. We've got the uh, base concreted in down there. So we are as robust as we can get for this custom gate that we're about to build which is what we're starting on right now. Now here's the thing about the gate. What kind of operator are you gonna use it? Is it a manual gate? Great, you're already covered. We're gonna be using an automatic gate opener by Ghost Controls thanks to an extremely generous viewer that hooked us up and sent some stuff in. So we gotta talk about that real quick before we whip this gate up because it's gonna determine what size we can build to. All right, so if we take a look real quick, I've already been pulling stuff out of the box and eyeballing everything. You wanna pay attention to the way this stuff mounts, the types of mounts that are included, and then go through the owner's manual and see you know, what side of the post this has to be mounted on because all this is gonna make a little bit of a difference on how we set this gate up. And it recommends that this operator control be as almost dead center of the gate as can be, and that's vertically. All right, excuse the messy workbench, but this is something else. Uh, a viewer of ours also sent me in the zombie lock with this kit right here. I'm very happy to see this because this gate could potentially catch a lot of wind and some storms, and I don't want a gate flopping around potentially damaging my operator. I'm happy to see this is going to lock close instead of just depending on that operator to hold it in position and then open it back up. And we're gonna be wiring all this in along with some other goodies on the next episode. But here's what's important. This lock has to mount to the gate, so we have to account for that. And this uh, latch mechanism has to mount to the post on the other side and everything has to kind of come in like that right there. So we have to go determine where we're gonna mount this off the post and then, well, as you can see, the gate's gonna have to stop somewhere over here. So we have to come at least this far off of our post. This is gonna determine the size that we go build our gate. Plus, we have to factor in our hinges. So check these out. I got these heavy duty weld on hinges off of Amazon and Ghost Controls recommends on any gate over 200 pounds, which ours will be to get a ball bearing style. So you can see this slides apart and there is a ball bearing in there, which the gate is actually gonna hinge on. So because we're gonna be welding one of these to our gate post that we just built and one's gonna weld to the gate, we also have to factor in this amount of spacing as well. It's gonna be like this right here. So we have to get a measurement on that. Plus, we have to measure the gate off the post this much and factor all this in so our gate closes. All right, so now that we've got the post back in, and most importantly, now that it's plumb, we can get a measurement from this post all the way across to that post, which is almost impossible to do by yourself unless you have one of these. Y'all have heard me brag about this forever. It's a laser tape measure. So we're gonna turn it on. Let's get a top measurement. And what you can't see on the camera is I can see a little red dot all the way over there on the post. And we can lock in a measurement. All right, so now we have two measurements and there's only a 16th of an inch between the top and bottom. I can live with that. I'd say we got everything pretty close and we can still level this post up. So 20 feet, one inch and a little to play with. Now we can go back and take all the measurements off for the lock and the hinges that I just showed you from this. So our gate will be a little under 20 feet wide by the time we go calculate out those measurements. All 
All right, so now that I got the rough frame of the gate welded up, we're gonna put us a monogram in. I had this custom cut because I don't freehand cut very well and I don't have a CNC plasma table to cut this kind of stuff, maybe one day. But kind of a funny story whenever I ordered this. So I don't consider myself like highly knowledgeable or just a know-it-all, but I do teach myself a lot of stuff. Um, it's just the way life works for me. If there's something I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out. And I like to share that kind of stuff. And I've experienced a lot of stuff and I guess sometimes think I, you know, maybe know stuff halfway decent. So I ordered this and it come in and it appeared wrong to me. And I contacted the person who cut this out. I'm gonna put a link in the description to them because I owe them an apology and maybe y'all might go order some of these from them. <laughs> so needless to say, I pulled it out of the package like this. We see the K, we see the E, we see the proper E again, and I see upside down letters, and I think, did they really cut this wrong? So I reached out to them, I was like, you know, the K, the E's, everything's right, so I've got it the right way, right? Well, after a long story short of talking with them, they're like, hey, Mr. Kelly, send us a picture. I did, and they're like, flip it over. I was like, oh, no, please, please don't tell me it was that simple. After all this back and forth. Yeah. It was that simple. Kelly looks absolutely perfect now. I felt about this big and stupid. We all make dumb mistakes, don't we? That's what I get for being a little too confident when I first pull it out and assuming, oh, it's absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. No, it's right. I just needed to flip it over. And it took a few days of back and forth with him to figure that out. <sighs> Dummy. So I've got a little bit of a dilemma here. I want this in the dead center and I, I had envisioned boxing this out. I didn't want all these horizontal runs going behind this and really throwing it off and not looking the world's best but that's going to take a lot of strength out of this very long gate so i'm trying to decide am i still going to box this in like i was thinking which means the top and bottom 36 inches of this material is supporting a very heavy gate for the rest of the length of the gate and i don't want to have any buckling issues here i know we're already going to have some strength issues with a wobbly gate back and forth just because of the material i chose I just don't want any up and down sag issues. But I really didn't want nothing running behind the sign because, well, it's just not going to look as good. All right, so before I weld this hinge on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the ball bearing in there because that allows me the proper spacing. And we're gonna put the open hole side on the gate facing upwards. That way it'll hold the ball bearing in, it won't fall out on the ground. We're gonna put the pin side of the hinge downward facing on the gate because whenever we're trying to lift put this on, we wanna be able to see that open hole and line this up and drop the gate down into it. That is absolutely critical 
that I get this hinge straight up and down perfectly because we're gonna be welded on two hinges and if they're off the slide a little bit either direction when the gate goes to swing open, you're gonna have binding and you're just gonna fight your gate opener. Things are not gonna work like they should. So I'm gonna spend a lot of extra time making sure I get everything nice and level, the gate level, the post level, center of the post and both hinges straight up and down. It's always best to wipe down your steel with lacquer thinner before painting, especially after sanding like I just done. Look at all this mess that would still be on the steel and wouldn't allow my paint to bond properly. All right, that was interesting, but worked out worked out pretty good. Now we need to check out all the stresses because I'm a bit concerned and I'll explain why. All right, let's see how well she opens, if there's any binding and any strain on the steel. Oh, wow. Opens unbelievably smooth. All right, so let me explain my concern and what I did here. Being that we're welded to just this outer section, top and bottom, I was concerned about some buckling or pulling out of the steel because you've got such a tremendous strain on these two welded joints right here. I mean, look at all the leverage that we have out here. I wasn't concerned about these necessarily pulling off. They're welded in very strong, but I just didn't want this piece of steel right here to buckle really bad. So I did something a little different. This piece of steel right here and the whole bottom is a much thicker gauge steel than everything else. And I did that for two reasons. I wanted to keep all of these a light, thin steel because I needed to keep the weight down on the gate, but I wanted the bottom one strong and especially this end that I'm welding to. And that's because this is where a lot of your strain is gonna be. The bottom helps keep this from sagging, being nice and rigid, since we only have two supports right there with the middle cut out, kind of supporting the gate, sagging from the middle. And I knew I needed this end piece to be really, really nice and thick uh, because, well, we're welded to it. You don't want thin steel down here or potentially where I'm welded in could be buckling and pulling out right there. Those ball bearing hinges, man, that's the way to go. I don't think my, my gate operator is going to have, I mean, I can open and close this one finger, no problem. It's not going to have a problem at all opening and closing this. Absolutely no flex in my post. Doing all that concrete steel post is the way to go because 
there is zero sag. I leveled the post or plumbed it and well you can see we're almost flush with the top of this which is what i was designing actually i'm a little high so this hasn't sagged down at all and we got our gap right there perfect all right so here is the gate in its completed fashion you can see the k here the monogram turned out great and uh, there's been some minor settling issues. It looks like an eighth of an inch over the last couple of days of this sitting here. And I wanna explain how I set this post up to where I can adjust all that out. So while this isn't the most sturdy option, I did this on purpose. There is bolts and heavy duty galvanized washers underneath the bottom plate. So what this allows me to do is adjust these nuts on the bottom side, loosen the top nuts, adjust the bottom, and I can move this post any direction I want to to deal with any sort of sag issues as things happen. So this allows me infinite adjustments to always plumb this post up. Plus it also keeps my steel base off of the concrete to where it's not sitting in moisture and rusting out premature only. I like that gap here. Now everything you're seeing here, I gotta chip back some of this concrete, clean all this up cover this area up nice. We may eventually wind up with rock down here or asphalt milling, so you're not gonna see the concrete here. I've gotta come get all of this out of the way. But thus far, I am very happy the way this turned out. The only thing I got going on right now, you'll see a little bit of paint blemishes and some runs. I've only got one light coat on this, but it's gonna be cold enough for the next five days that it's below the temperature required for painting. So some of these little paint blemishes you see, it's just one light coat. I've got to put at least two more coats of flat paint on here. So we're gonna deal with that. And then I need to get a couple shots of grease in my hinges and we'll have this buttoned up. What I'm gonna do off camera, since I've already showed how we built this entire four board fence, I am going to run four boards and drill and tap into this post to cover this section up so it'll look just like this. So the next episode that uh, we do, you'll see that's probably been taken care of. So overall, I'm very pleased. It's the first gate I've ever built, the first four board fence I've ever done, and uh, I'm very happy with the way all of this looks. There's a few minor blemishes in the metal, some blemishes in the paint that I'll take care of, but that's just because I'm still learning a lot of this stuff, but I'm not gonna let it stop me. I'm gonna tackle this. Overall, this would have cost me thousands of dollars just in labor to pay somebody to come do all this and weld the gate up. And I saved that myself and learned myself a new skill. One last thing to talk about this top cap. I put this on purpose because a gate this long will flop back and forth this direction. By welding this on, it gives me a lot of structural integrity. So now the gate's a lot more sturdy and we actually really like the way it looked. I'm about to plug these ends right here with some caps to just finish this off, but this also gives me a tube to run all the way down to run my wiring to my latch down there. So this serves multiple purposes. All right, so you're not gonna wanna miss the next episode. That's where I'm gonna show you how we're gonna automate all this. We have a very, very large ghost control system that we're gonna be putting in. We're gonna be solar powering this. We're gonna have keypads, wireless remotes. We're gonna have connectivity to the internet, powered locks, all kinds of stuff. It's gonna be a very involved episode right there. That'll be coming up in the next week or so. Thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next episode.